Hey everyone, Zephan Blacksburg here of ZMB Media, and today we're in a video studio in Washington, D.C. We're putting on a one-day conference that goes live from noon to 5 p.m., and so I just want to give you a little inside look at what's going on behind the scenes to make this happen. So right now we're in our TriCaster room. The TriCaster is what we're using as our video switcher for today. We'll have our operator back here just behind me basically running the whole show. So he's going to be putting on graphics on screen. He's going to have single box frames, double box frames, anytime there's a panel discussion. We're going to put all of our different people into their boxes so that we can see them in a nice visual way. And pretty much all the magic is going to happen from back here. I've got a little bit of a setup behind our TriCaster operator, and this is something that we're going to be using for a large portion of the day. We're going to take our feed out of the TriCaster, and I'll be using some of my live streaming equipment to send this feed into Zoom, which is our final platform destination where the audience is going to watch live. What I'm also doing from back here, you notice there was some other things more than just a laptop or two. We're going to be bringing in our guests virtually over Skype and Zoom. And so we're doing that from back here so that I can load people into the Zoom call where they're going to be speaking and presenting, kind of like a virtual green room. And then I'll send it over to the TriCaster over here where he can kind of take over, put them into their individual boxes. So let's go ahead and take a quick walk down the hall. We're going to show you the studio where the magic is also going to be happening. And then you'll see some more behind the scenes throughout the rest of the day. So just behind me here, you can actually see the studio where our talent's going to be today. We're going to have one person on camera, but we have two cameras because they're bringing in an illustrator who's going to draw pictures of some of the event and conference today, some good sound bites and things on an iPad, and they make like a huge poster board of the event virtually. We're going to take that as a feed and we're also going to have them sitting in here so they can watch all the fun and everything that's happening. So Monty here is our TriCaster operator for the day and what he's doing right now is basically loading in all the graphics, getting the videos loaded in. So graphics are everything from the lower thirds, the titles that go on screen with their name and their title, but also we have a couple of hold slides. So we have a, we'll be starting momentarily, we have a slide that says we'll be back soon, and a slide that says thank you for watching. There's later in the day there's some award winners, so there's a slide for that that has all the award winners on screen. He's bringing all of these images in, just getting them ready. We can even order them so that we kind of know when they're gonna come up on the presentation. And then also what he's doing is creating an auxiliary output because we're outputting not only the main feed or the main show for our recording purposes and for streaming to Zoom, but he's also outputting a feed to a screen in the studio. You'll see there's a vertical screen that's going to be next to our talent. So when their guests come in, their guests will show up on that screen. So we created a graphic border and a really cool frame that's going to go around that and brand that for the conference. So right now he's just getting everything loaded in. He's got the uh, run of show there so he can tell what order that all goes in. And what I did was in our run of show, I went through and I roughly placed what sort of things he needs to build out, whether it's a single box or a double box or a triple box, depending on how many people are on our panels. We may like open on her inside a single box, but then maybe take her full screen so we can put her lower third up in the right place. Because I didn't look, but I think if you bring up a lower third right now, it's not gonna be like in the right position over top of one of the boxes. So you can see here, we've got one of the double boxes built out. This is so that we can place a person's video feed in here, whether they're virtual or in the studio. And then we also have room for PowerPoint slides off to the slide. Off we also have PowerPoint slides off to the side. So we can put in anything into these boxes. It's just about kind of building this out for the show in advance of starting so that we're not doing this on the fly when we're focused on 18 other things, making sure that things go live to Zoom and monitoring the chat window to make sure that everyone can hear everything properly and just making sure the internet connection stays up. So there's a lot of things that get built out in advance to help make sure that the show runs smoothly once we're live. So we're two hours out from showtime. Some of the things we're doing right now is just finishing building out our MEs. Those are the presets of the single box, double box, triple box. We're also checking all of our cable runs, so making sure that the studio can see the live feed, that we can see the studio. It's right down the hall, but there's a lot of cables run through the ceiling here, so we want to make sure everything looks good. 
I'm also setting up the zooms on my side. The unique thing about this event is we have two zooms. There's a zoom A that's going to be directly in the TriCaster that our switcher can control from up front. And then a zoom B where I can load in people separately for the session that follows that one. So I can get people loaded in on Zoom from my computer back here. I can make any adjustments, maybe let them know, move your camera this way, open up your window, close your window, get the dog out of the room. And we can do all of that before they go live so that I can send it over to our switcher and then we're ready to go as soon as that session is up on the schedule. So two hours out from live time, it's one of those things where there's not a whole lot going on, but it is just kind of some final checks, making sure everything looks good and checking that you know our talent is comfortable and ready in the studio. Hello everybody, welcome to today's annual, ninth annual conference of the Diversity and Flexibility Alliance. I'm Minar Morales, the President and CEO of the Alliance, and I am so thrilled to welcome all of you joining us today. It's great that we can see some familiar faces um, and some new faces as well as you all engage in reflecting, reimagining, and recalibrating the future of Thanks. work. Good morning and congratulations. We're thrilled to have be able to honor both of you, both of your organizations. And the important part of the recognition is to make sure that the audience gets to learn exactly what you're doing within your organizations to create that ripple effect that I was talking about. So Ellen, let me start with you. Can you talk more about what Arnold and Porter is doing? Sure, thank you. Well, first, thank you so much for this award. We really, really are honored to have received it. Very much appreciate it. And as Minar mentioned, um, our policy that we created is intended to provide flexibility, not just for our attorneys, but for our entire professional staff. So we're about one hour into our live stream event right now. You can probably hear it going on behind me in this room here. We have one of our keynote speakers presenting for about the next 20 minutes or so, which gives a great break to our talent that's here in the studio, but also gives us a chance to kind of break away and actually talk to the camera for a moment. As with anything that's live, things can go wrong, things will go wrong. It's not a matter of if, but rather when. So two things to note from today's live stream that we're working on are one, we got off to a late start of about three or four minutes late because we were just trying to get our virtual guests in and settled and making sure that we had communication with the studio room. So that's why I have comms on so that I can now talk to our studio room and instruct our camera operators. And then two, one of the things that went wrong was we didn't realize our client's Zoom account was limited to 100 attendees on their settings. So we had to get on the live chat with Zoom real quick to get that set over to 500 attendees so that we could allow more people in from the waiting room. It was getting stuck at 100 and so we needed to make sure we could let everybody in. So just quick lessons learned. These are some things that don't ruin the live stream by any means. We have it completely recorded so we can always get that recording to anybody who didn't get a chance to watch. But definitely some things to make sure that you check for next time and go through and check with your clients so that you're ready to go and things flow a little bit smoother. So currently we're dealing with a little bit of a sound issue that popped up where we are missing our mix minus audio from the TriCaster going back into Zoom. So our virtual guests can actually hear what's happening minus their own voice. Something. Yeah. Yeah, let's um you say you can go to a whole slide? Uh we'll yes. Stop this and, um, talk about this. Let me back up. Alright, one sec. Okay. <coughs> That's what we're getting. Have them ask Menard yeah, have Menard to do a test. Uh, do you want to just ask one of them if you have comms? Yeah, 
Um, do you mind taking this for a sec? Because I think I'm going to cut away to a hold slide so yep. that he can try to restart. So, Monty, are you ready for me to do this? I'm ready. All right, stand by. Let me get the right slide in place. Hey, Joel or Joe, can you just have an argument at 10 count, please? Okay, you're clear. I have a hold slide up. I can fix that. That should be better. Uh, Tower to count again? It's a line out, he said. Is that? That should be better. We you just have lost. Count to 10 again? Yeah. Yes, yeah. Uh, Monty's rebooting the trimester. Tower to, can she count for me you again? Can count to 10 one more time? That sounds more natural. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that sounded more natural. Do you want me to have Steve give you a little bit more? <laughs> just a little bit. Can you ask Steve if he can give us just a little bit more? So what we're doing right now is we're trying to bypass the audio to just inject Menar's audio using the web presenter to our Zoom call temporarily until we can figure oh, out what's going yeah, on. Thank you. Well, he can't. He's basically just going to switch it line or mic. That's OK. I think we'll have enough that they can hear it OK. So I'm up on a hold slide in the Zoom just okay. for now with no music, but it's okay. So Monty's got uh, Monty's back Restarting. Uh, I'll get this back to you. Yep. Thanks for grabbing that. Yeah. So I guess the question of the, the hour will be, does Zoom get fixed by him restarting and coming back in? Yeah, I know this is going to push us behind by so a minute. Yeah, we need to turn to the other speakers because they're just saying I'm waiting. Uh, yeah, we can't let them in just yet because we're trying to troubleshoot. I'll put them in Yeah. Well, as long as Menar's audio is going there, I can at least get a single person in full screen here. Um, but it's not our permanent fix for the afternoon. Studio standby, I think we're back. Hang tight. All right, Monty, you just say the word. Okay. All right, Minari, I think we're ready to come back in. Come Thumbs back up if you're ready. Yes, sir. All right. Okay, everyone. In five, four, three, two, and one. Welcome back, everybody. We are coming to our last segment, um, which I've been excited for for weeks. I'm excited to introduce our uh, closing keynote concert. It's a, it's a first for us, not a first for Peter, but um, we are thrilled to be joined today with uh, a Juno Award nominee, Peter Katz, and he is a Canadian Screen Award nominated singer-songwriter who has spent the past 15 years touring internationally. He has been described by many of his fans and speaking clients as a thunderbolt for the soul. He's a renowned CBC radio host. Tom Power described Peter's music as one of the most heartfelt, beautiful, and vulnerable records of the year, an astonishing record. And I've, I've been privileged to hear Peter on numerous occasions and can attest to that. This is my version of Halo, dedicated to all of you. Here we go. And everywhere I'm looking now, I'm surrounded by your embrace. Baby, I can see your halo. You know you're my saving grace. And everything I need more, it's written all over your face. Baby, I can feel your halo. I pray you won't fade away. Thank you so much, Peter. 
I could not have thought of a better way to end this conference um, than with your inspirational music and your words. Your music has been a gift. Your friendship has been a gift. And I um, am so thankful that you could bring all of your music and your wisdom to all of us today. So thank you, as somebody said in the chat, for sharing your heart and your art with us today. So overall today, I would consider this live stream a massive success. We still had tons of challenges that presented themselves throughout the entire live stream event. So we were live from noon till about 5 p.m. And somewhere around an hour, hour and a half into our show, we had an issue with the TriCaster sending the return audio feed to any of our virtual guests on Zoom. It just decided to think there's no microphone plugged in, which is a huge problem because our virtual guests won't hear the person that's actually here in studio. So we had some quick troubleshooting. We bypassed that. We used the Blackmagic Web Presenter setup that I had over here so we could inject the audio from the studio back into the Zoom meeting so they could still hear everything that was going on. It was a good temporary fix, but ultimately it wasn't a permanent fix for the rest of the show day. So we still found that jumping in and out of multiple Zoom calls for virtual guests was giving us a lot of trouble and a lot of different issues in multiple areas. So it's really important to remember to have your backups on hand. It's really important to consider being able to have people call in through Skype, especially with the TriCaster setup, since you have room for both Skype and Zoom callers to call in. And in the end, I think that we did a fantastic job at catching up, making sure that even though we were somewhere around 20 minutes behind at one point in time, I think we finished at just three minutes late for the entire show. So we called up at the tail end of the day, and overall, it was a fantastic event.